Good everybody. Uh, we'll get started this evening. If you want to turn to 411, we'll sing Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Father God, thank you so much for another beautiful day. Thank you, God, for health and life and the ability, Lord, to be, uh, to enjoy another day, God. And, and thank you, Lord, for this day that we celebrate, Lord, the independence of our country and the, and the freedom that we have to come together like this and worship freely. And Lord, uh, just, just thank you for the abundant blessings uh, that we've enjoyed throughout life God and uh, you we just thank you for providing for us and loving us the way that you do God uh, thank you for being always patient with us and uh, God thank you for uh, nudging us and correcting us when we need it and uh, I just pray God that you would help us to uh, all Lord as your people I just pray that you would help us to uh, humble ourselves and pray Seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, Lord, that you could hear our prayers and that you could heal our land, Lord. We love you. We praise you for this service tonight, and we just pray that it's uh, all done according to your will and, and that it's pleasing to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good to see everyone here tonight. Uh, just as a as, just as a reminder, uh, we did this before, and you may or may not remember, but that's that's fine. Uh, 
when, you, when we get ready to take the cup, uh, if you'll just push that little tab straight down, you'll probably feel it click, you might even hear it click, and when you let go of it, the little cellophane top should separate. And you'll just pull that little cellophane top back, and that will reveal the bread. And then when we get to the cup, you'll grab a hold of the solid plastic, and if you'll hold it away from yourself and pull it back towards you, that's where I found that to be a little bit easier. Uh, and then take the cup that way. And if anybody needs help, let me know. And because like I said, that that little cell thing is I know it's there, but I can't really see it <laughs> because of my, of my arm is, is not I can't do this and this. And if, once I do that, then it sort of disappears. But uh, uh, but anyway, when we get to there, I'll, I will. Uh, I just want to remind you of, of what that is and things that way. Just our way of announcements uh, tonight. Of course, we're here tonight. Uh, tomorrow at 8.30, the young people will leave for Laurel Lake Bible Camp. Continue to be praying for them as Jennifer uh, PV and the girls go down. And just uh, pray that God will speak to them and the whole camp in a clear way. And numbers are not a, a thing really, but, but normally throughout history, uh, 10 to 15% of the kids that attend uh, Lord like Bible camp, except Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior for the very first time. Uh, so that's uh, that's exciting. That of course is is what it's about. Uh, so if you'll just uh, continue to remember that. Uh, on the seventh, uh, Roland has graciously agreed to be here uh, for our Wednesday night study. On the eighth uh, is our vacation Bible school training at six. I want to thank you all. We got quite a few more that have signed up. Uh, we need a few more, so be uh, encouraging uh, with that. And again, like I said, I understand there's vacations and things because we move the date, and then that's fine. Uh, we will work with that. Uh, along with Vacation Bible School, if you will begin saving your uh, half-gallon milk jugs, uh, wash them out, <laughs> but uh, we have a craft where we can make an elephant with those. Uh, so if you'll just begin saving those, and, and we'll have the time to, uh, to be bringing those in. And, uh, and we should have other things maybe that you can help us with, but be saving your, your milk jugs uh, as well. And then, like I said, that training is on Thursday night at 6. Next Sunday uh, morning, Lisa and I will be leaving uh, this, uh, this Wednesday uh, on vacation, and we'll be back the following Tuesday night, so we'll be here the following Wednesday. But because of that, then uh, Jeff Reed uh, will be preaching both services on uh, this coming Sunday morning. He's excited about uh, being here uh, next week. And so you pray for him and welcome him as he comes to be here. Um, did not notice we had more children's church workers sign up, but we definitely, uh, if it is full, then I apologize. But <laughs> if it's not, uh, please think about signing up to help with uh, children's church uh, as well and uh, to bring in your, uh, uh, your gel ministry, uh, your uh, toothpaste, your body wash, and those things uh, to help with our jail ministry as well. All right. Anything else this, this evening? All right. Run, if you would, then let's continue. All right. Let's turn to number 406, the solid rock.
66. Let us break bread together. Turn with me, if you would, to John chapter 14, and we're going to begin in verse 13 as we read from God's Word this evening. John chapter 14, and beginning in verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. And at that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that keepeth my commandments, he that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this evening and as we gather around this table. May your presence and your love and your forgiveness continue to overflow in our lives. I pray if there's one here tonight that does not know you, that they will cry out to you and allow you to come into their lives and receive the forgiveness of their sins and the hope of eternal life. And Lord, as we come around this table, we do so in remembrance of the sacrifice that you gave to us, that we can have the forgiveness of our sins, the hope of eternal life, the chains of death and the grave broken forever, and the ability and the privilege to come into your presence and experience your love. Bless us now, Father as we worship you this night, in Jesus' precious name, amen. In this day and age, everyone has rights. 
It seems like we have the right to do just about anything and everything we please. It doesn't seem to matter if you hurt anyone or destroy anyone's property because we have rights. We have the, the rights to do whatever we want or to do to someone else whatever we want because we are victims or maybe because uh, we have the right to act out because we have suffered in any way we feel justified. And I believe we've come a long way from what our forefathers really envisioned for our country. But at that same time, we do enjoy a great deal of rights and freedoms that our forefathers shed their blood and died for that make this nation great. As I said this morning, we celebrate the 4th of July as Independence Day. We are an independent nation. We do not and will not bow to any other foreign country. In fact, I think I can remember when we were when the when I was first first watching the Olympics, and whether you know this or not, I'm not. I can't remember exactly how it's done. But when the other nations come by, I don't know if it's the Olympic Council or somewhere or the or whatever. But anyway, they all dip their flag, but the United States does not dip their flag because we do not bow down to anybody else. We have defended the cause of freedom around the world. We have defeated those who tried to eliminate, the, who tried to decimate the world or impose dictatorial governments. They have treated people in inhuman ways. And I think one thing that the world forgets that whenever, as far as I know, and I may be wrong, but I don't think so, whenever we have come against another nations or nations in war, and we have then, in, in fact, then won the war, we, America, turns around and rebuilds that enemy's country. And I don't know of any other nation that does that, you know, because our desire is not to wipe them off the face of the earth. Our desire is to get their attention and to have them operate as their government as long as they treat others and people and everybody, you know, in hate, in, in, in hate, in, in humane ways. Our desire is not to have, you know, one world America government. We do then rebuild those countries, and I think those countries in the world sort of forget that about America, that we not only shed our blood, but we then try to rebuild those nations. As a nation, we have the right to express our beliefs. We have the right to worship without fear of persecution or government interference. We have the right to worship God, and we have the right to freely tell others about His love. Now there are times in some situations where that is sort of a little bit different as we're trying to share about Jesus Christ in different, in different uh, social events or public events. But even that, in America we have the right of free speech where a lot of countries don't even come close to that. I've always said that our nation has many faults, as I said this morning, and I don't agree with everything that is done. But we live in a nation where I am proud to celebrate our independence on this 4th of July. I am proud of the freedoms that have been bought with the blood of those who have went before me. The ability to be here tonight and to freely worship with you, my brothers and sisters. But even greater than the rights that we have as American citizens are our rights as a Christian. And that's some of those rights I read with you tonight. We began there in John and talking about the right to prayer. Jesus says, and whatsoever, in verse 13, whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. We have the right to come before our Father, the creator of all heaven and earth, the one who gives and sustains life, we are asked to come into his presence. He wants us to come into our pres in his, to his presence. He enjoys us coming into his presence. 
we have that right and that privilege to come before God with our lives. And when we do, we have the right to do whatever we want. We can cry. We can complain. <laughs> we can, we can, we can, uh, we can uh, tell him about anything that bothers us. We can laugh. We can criticize. We can talk his ear off. We can also reach out from the depths of our sorrow and our grief and find out that he is reaching out to us. We have the right to talk to him at any time, at night or day or any situation. And it does not give him pause. I have told many of you, you may have heard this when you have been in situations, that I keep clothes beside my bed and I keep my phone turned on. And if you need to call me in the middle of the night and I need to come or do, I will come or do. And you probably say, well, thank you very much, Brother Razor, but, you know, I'll try not to bother you. But you don't have to say that. Well, you don't have to say that to me either. <laughs> but you don't have to say that to God at all. He wants us to bother him. Because he wants us, he wants to know what is on our hearts. And we have that right. Jesus also then tells us, promises us in verse 16, that the reply will be more than just words. He says, I'll pray the Father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. We have the right to the comforter through the Holy Spirit who comes and will comfort us in our time of need and never leaves us and is there for us. Verse 17 promised that he was sent only to the children of God and not to the world because the world just doesn't have the right to receive him. Only Christians have this right. It says, even the spirit of truth, verse 17, which the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But here's the promise. You do know the Comforter. You do know the Holy Spirit. You do know His presence because it says, He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Not just to come and to go and to be there and not be there, but to dwell, to live, to be within us. That's the right and that's the promise that Jesus gives us that we can call upon the Holy Spirit for help. And if you need help in your life, and if you are searching for comfort or truth, you, can, you must first turn your life over to Christ before you can exercise that right and that privilege as a Christian. But once you do, it is there for you no matter who you are or what you have done. Jesus died for you upon the cross. As Christians, we have the right to live, verse 19 proclaims. He says, yet in a little while the world seeth me no more, but ye see me because I live. We know that the cross was not the end of Jesus Christ. We know that he was put in that tomb for three days and he, was, he died. But we also know that when that third day the stone was rolled away and by the power of the resurrection, Jesus Christ lives and sits at the right hand of God. And he says, because I live, ye shall live also. Jesus promises us life. He promises life and abundant life to all who follow him. And we have that right to live a life full of meaning and direction. It was so exciting when we went to Breathitt County and talked to Sherry about how excited that she was. When she said, I've been praying for somebody to help us. And I thought, well, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's us. <laughs> but with God, that's exactly who he needed to send and exactly what we needed to do. And the excitement of, of her knowing that even though her, her life was a mess, that because of Jesus Christ, she was going to make it through. Because we do not have the right to live without suffering. Suffering comes and happens to all of us as we have seen and we have lived through as a congregation. But we can live our lives to the fullest and we are able to handle whatever we must face with the power of God to help us and to live our lives. 
we can have peace knowing our lives are in God's hands and no matter what happens, that we are his. We have that security in knowing that and knowing that no one can take us out of the Father's hand. We know earlier in, in John 14 that he talks about, you know, we have, we have a mansion that is reserved in heaven. And we have the right to claim that as a child of God. And you know I've said it before as well. I'm glad that I have a mansion in heaven. But I'm just to be glad if that door was open and somebody would roll me inside and I would have a corner. That would, that would make me, you know, that's, that's all I even remotely deserve. But Jesus Christ has built a mansion for his children. And one day very soon that we will all go and be there together. We have the right to claim God's love. And I know you realize that our rights as Christians are not something to claim because of who we are. That we did not earn them or buy them or even fight for them. Because we have these rights only through God's love and the sacrifice of his son Jesus Christ. Who gave up his rights. Who had the right to all things. But Jesus laid everything down to take the sins of this world upon himself. And willingly gave his life to pay the penalty for our sins. So the rights we have as Christians are not our own. But they were bought with the blood of Jesus Christ and his body which was broken for you. We have these rights not as American citizens. Or not because of our heritage or anything else that we have done. These rights are given to each and every individual who makes their own decision to follow Jesus Christ. It is something only you can do. And only you know whether you've done it or not. Only I know whether I've done it or not. So before we come to this table and take the Lord's Supper, we're going to sing a hymn of invitation as Lisa comes. I'd like you to have these rights as Scripture promise us. You must be born again. You must confess your sins. You must ask Jesus Christ to take control or control of your life and give everything over to him. And tonight, Christian, I ask you to rededicate your life. You have that right. You have the right to receive baptism. You have the right to join our church as we continue to serve Jesus Christ. You have the right to come to this altar and pour your heart out. You have the right to come into God's presence and allow his hand to comfort you. Come this evening as God speaks to you. You exercise your right as Christians and come into his presence and worship him. Come as God speaks to you. Rodney. It's number 14.
I didn't have enough faith. I didn't put out enough uh, And just a reminder, as I said, as you take the cup, you'll, when it's time, we'll just press that whole tab down and the little cellophane will pop up, barely, but if you can get a hold of it, you'll pull it back for the wafer. And then when it's time to drink uh, the juice, I feel it's more comfortable to, to hold that tab away from you and pull it towards you, and then you'll take the juice at that time. But before we do that, as we have come and gathered around this table, I want to give you an opportunity to prepare your hearts uh, as we come to this table. So if you would, let's take a moment in uh, silent prayer. Uh, At least if you would play a little bit uh, as we ask God to bless us and prepare our hearts as we come before this table. Let's pray. knowing that you willingly went to the cross as why we were yet enemies, that you went to that cross knowing of what you would suffer, but you did so knowing of what it would do for us. And by doing so, you have broken the chains of death and the grave. You have overcome the darkness that is in this world. You have provided a way that we could come to you You have sent, as our scripture mentioned tonight, you have sent the Holy Spirit to be a comforter, to dwell within us and to teach us and to hold us and to keep us. You have promised us that we are more than overcomers to those who love you. You have promised that in all things that your will will be done, whether the good or the bad, they will work together for your glory to those who are called according to thy purpose. So, Father, we humbly come before this table to recognize and to remember the sacrifice that you gave for our lives. And we do so as living sacrifices. We ask you this night to take our lives and to use them for thy glory, to help us and to empower us and to forgive us as we strive to do your will with every breath that we take. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we do pray. Amen. When Jesus gathered around the table with his disciples on that night in which he was going to be betrayed, he took the bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Jeff Pointer, if you would, please, would you have the prayer for the bread? And after, this, and after the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had stopped saying this cup, this New Testament in my blood, this do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Johnny, would you have the prayer for the cup, please? to seal it and just take it with you and put it in the trash or leave it right there and we'll pick it up. If you would then join with me, if you will stand and we'll sing the first and the last verses of Bless Be the Tie. If you need the words, that's hymn number 387. But please stand as we're dismissed. and every day. Go, and may God's blessing be upon you and your family 
as you serve him this day, now and forever, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen.